Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in again to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. Cedric here in Antwerp with another brew review and today we are having another uh, Belgian classic um, that's unfortunately no longer available. This is again uh, one of the last ones in existence just like we had with the Bangeleke. So I really have to do this right now because it has a shelf life of three years and we are nearing that, uh, that tipping point. Since Lucifer has a rich history, this is gonna be a slightly longer video, um, and it was a great part of the modern Belgian beer history, so a lot of things have been written about Lucifer on the internet. Um, that made it a serious job to fact check and separating truth from imagination. It has switched owners several times and it links together half of the Belgian beer world. And fittingly, the Lucifer brand and recipe are currently owned by Duvel himself. So Lucifer, the devil, full circle. Now it does speak to many people's imagination and imagination tends to go wild sometimes. Oftentimes, it is thought to be developed by the old Riva Brewery. So remember Stephen Powell's from the Tank 7 story at Boulevard uh, in the 80s, but it goes back quite a bit further. So let's dive right in, shall we? All I can say for certain is, well, about the origins of this beer, is that it was first brewed at some time between 1922 and 1930 or the early 30s in Meulebeke, West Flanders, not too far from Russelare, uh, where Rodenbach is located. In 1901, Camille van der Vondele bought this large industrial building originally as a broom factory and he expanded it almost immediately. But Camille was also an avid brewer and in 1922 he officially uh, switched trades when he founded the Vondel Brewery in that same building. Now note that Camille's name is Van de Vondelen and not Vondel. And that's because he actually didn't name the brewery after himself, uh, but rather after the 17th century Dutch poet Joost van de Vondel, who is also the namesake of the Vondel Park in Amsterdam, uh, amongst other things and whose portrait was also used on the labels of many Vondel beers. Joost van der Vondel also wrote a play called Lucifer around 1650, 1654 I believe. And yeah, here we have it. So to state that Camille was inspired by the poet would be a vast understatement. Vondel Brewery started out by brewing a heavy brown ale uh, with an 8.5% uh, ABV and later on they added a Flemish red brown ale similar to their neighbors Rodenbach to their portfolio and they topped that off with a rich amber beer that we know today as Lucifer be it in a slightly different form. After Camille passed away in 1929 the Laurens family got hold of most of the shares and in the 1930s, they actually torn down the complete building and replaced it with the one that we currently still know, the one that is still in place uh, in Art Deco style. They competed heavily with the Rodenbach and in the 50s, in 1957 to be exact, sold their shares to Brewery Artois in Leuven, who then made a distribution deal with Rodenbach, the former enemy, for their Vondel shares. So Rodenbach took over Vondel with a slight turnaround. Rodenbach kept the brewery until the early 70s, but then closed the site down. And the building was sold off to the local government uh, in 1976. It's currently a recreation center, I believe. And the brands Vondel and Lucifer were bought by brewery Riva in Dentergem. Now, Riva was in fact no small competitor because it was founded in 1896 by Henry de Splenter or Henri de Splenter. And Riva saw its third generation de Splenter in the form of Ivan in 1950 and things went fast. So Riva cooperated with Alken Maas 
to make Dentergem's wheat beer, a strong competitor in the wheat beer market, and by that they successfully took on Hoogarden. The brewery kept growing and quickly needed to expand, so here come the 70s. They created more capacity, but then they needed to fill up that capacity as well. Uh, Overcapacity is never a good thing, so they looked around for starting with friendly takeovers. Now, like I said, in the mid-70s they bought Vondel and Lucifer from Rodenbach. But bearing the name in mind, they tweaked the, the Lucifer recipe to become a strong blonde ale instead of an amber to compete with Duvel, back then brewed by Mortjat. Of course they didn't stop there, because in 1988 they acquired part of brewery de Halve Man in Brugge, Bruges. You might know those from uh, Bruxelles Zot, Strafe Hendrik. And they kept that for a few years. And in 1990, the old Liefmans Brewery, which actually dates back to 1679 in Oudenaarde, followed with their old brown and their fruit beers. And from 1991 until 1993, het Ankeri Mechelen from Gouden Carolus or Golden Charles was briefly part of the group as well. Unfortunately, around the turn of the millennium, Alken Maas blew up the deal uh, one-sided and announced their own wheat beer, Brugse Witte. Riva then stayed behind with a huge overcapacity and even more debt and was forced to sell. In 2002, brewer Gino van Tegem from brewery Unibrau in Quebec, which is actually a Belgian brewery, but and investor Renaldo Delabi acquired the entire Riva portfolio for a whopping 5 million euros. In 2005 they renamed the entire group to Liefman's Brewery, after the oldest and most distinguished member of the bunch, and they even launched a new Abbey beer called Abdis, uh, which turned into a range with three different beers I believe, blonde, brown and triple, in 2006. But the two kept struggling, and in 2007 the company was declared bankrupt. Too bad for them, because they didn't file for bankruptcy, they filed for protection against their creditors, so Jesus. But the judge did declare them bankrupt, so they had to cough up a whole lot of money. Now, this was the exact same time that Duvel Mortgat was looking for an interesting opportunity regarding the fruit beer market. So they swooped in with 4.5 million euros for the whole lot, including everything, buildings, uh, the brands, everything. But apparently Mortgat was only interested in the Leafman's part. But they had no choice than to take it all, so they did. After which they immediately closed down the facility in Dentergem, so the old Riva buildings, discontinued the Abdis line and they started selling off parts of their new lot. So in 2008, for example, Straffe Hendrik returned to the Hall of a Man in Bruges, where it came from, because actually Riva never returned that brand. So I can hear you thinking, Cedric, Lucifer is now owned by Duvel Mortgat. So they brew it, right? But didn't the bottle say otherwise? Yeah, the bottle says otherwise. Since Duvel already has, well, Duvel, they had no need for another strong blonde in their collection. Het Anker, however, had no such beer and given their history with the Riva group, made an offer on the recipe in 2008. Of course, uh, the people over at Duvel Mortgat aren't fools and they saw Lucifer as a possible competitor and they don't like too much competition. So instead of selling off the recipe, Duvel Mortgat and Het Anker came to an agreement granting Het Anker the rights to brew Lucifer temporarily under license. Which is genius, of course. Now, of course, I don't know the details of said agreement, but I've heard that the license was evaluated every two years and extended for another two years on the condition that competition didn't become too much. In honor of its heritage, Lucifer was reintroduced to the public by het Anker on the Möllebeke Carnival in 2009. 
and eventually in 2020 had anchors chose to discontinue the production of lucifer after 11 years because of course they had heavily expanded their range and marketed their newfound beers and, and yeah of course they are going strong as hell now funny enough uh, two brother-in-laws from Mullebeke, Tom Dallin and Tim Duck, have this small drinks company called Boisson Beaufrère, or Drinks of the Good Brothers or something. And when they heard about this, they thought, why not buy the entire stock of that last batch? And they did, and they symbolically sold it from their hometown, where Lucifer originated in the first place. So back to Mullebeke but about a hundred years later so yeah pretty cool now if you see me squirming a bit i did hurt my knee so don't worry about that but lucifer underwent several rebrandings um i'll put up some labels here but this is the last one that we know lucifer with the devil himself instead of a trident they put a little anchor on his staff uh, they put in a new font, ever so slightly uh, subtle, but it is still the strong blonde 8% ABV beer that we know from the Riva era. And it is brewed by Het Anker, as we can see by the bottle cap and the subtle references. So, Lucifer, fiery blonde and devilishly, sorry, fiery blonde and devilishly good. This golden yellow special beer with soft bitter aftertaste will release the devil inside you. Then, as usual, barley malt water. Uh, nothing special here. Now, the Lucifer glass actually is this smaller baller glass. Um, we might compare that to the Super 8 glasses. But unfortunately, I don't have one of those, so I will be using my trusted tasting glasses and here we go quite active a lot of carbon dioxide I see some foam climbing up nice and strong malty a lot of carbon dioxide again a bit herbal as well slightly citrusy but I am going to start pouring because I don't want another gushing accident. Now this beer is re-fermented in the bottle and it is rather old so it will probably be a bit drier and that's also where this uh, excess carbon dioxide comes from so that's my fault not theirs. Um, but apart from that, a nice hazy golden yellow, actually more to the yellow side than the gold. Some beautiful white foam, very excessive white foam, but I just told you where that came from. Very, very, very active. And again, quite hoppy, but also a bit fruity and even citrusy. Bittersweet. Actually a very, very classic, lovely uh, beer scent, like a strong beer should smell. So let's have a taste. Cheers. just as I remember. Um, for a strong beer like this, it has a relatively thin mouthfeel. Um, I'm not gonna say watery, but slightly thin. But of course, because of the re-fermentation in the bottle, no sugar is left in the beer. So it is a bit drier 
than it should be and it's not at all boozy but i do feel it in the throat here in the back um so this might even go to eight and a half percent abv instead of eight but those are of course minor details now i do get in the taste that herbal component uh, i don't believe that they add herbs during brewing um, but this is all malt and hop aroma of course again bittersweet in flavor as well and for some reason quite citrusy very very refreshing as well pretty thirst quenching so actually a shame that they don't brew this anymore and I do see of course where the competition with Duval comes from um, because it has a lot of carbon dioxide and it is an 8% ABV strong blonde this could be compared to a sweeter fruitier version of Duval and of course they do have a lot of competitors these days they have Omer, we have Hopus, we have a, a vast range of strong blondes these days but back in those days there weren't that many and they weren't so spread as they are now so I do get it um, on the other hand it is Het Anker that blew up that uh, agreement so also the aftertaste is like soft soft bitter not really bitter but very soft bitter and I keep bringing up the keyword citrusy uh, so again very well uh, very well brewed very good work on the hop side uh, I, I would actually love to know the hop bill of this beer but I'm afraid that that will be secret of the trade Okay. On that note, I am gonna leave you guys. Um, yeah, I know I turned this into another history lesson, but I hope you found this uh, a bit interesting in the slightest. Uh, if you're a beer fan, a Belgian beer fan, you probably will. Now, as usual, thank you so much for watching. This means a lot to me that you guys keep tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions, or if you want to see me do a deep dive on either one of these breweries, uh, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and you'll be the first to know whenever I upload something. Until then, I'll probably do a uh, brewery breakdown tomorrow. When I know that it is Wednesday, I skip Monday because that was a holiday and I work on holidays. So tomorrow there will be a brewery breakdown and Friday another brew review. So see you then. Cheers.